Welcome once again to another Juddy Productions video. Today's video we'll be looking at motion, focusing on motion graphs, and we have for today a video on a velocity time graph, example number one. Let's jump straight into it. Question number one, what was the acceleration of the object over the first two seconds? So here's the first two seconds in red. So the acceleration of a velocity time graph simply equal to the gradient. And the gradient, as we know, is rise over run. So let's look at this red line on our graph and calculate the rise and the run. First of all, the rise. So we're comparing the start of this line to the end of this line. And we can see that it has risen from 0 up to 40, so it has a rise of 40 meters per second. The vertical axis, of course, is measured in velocity in meters per second. The run, on the other hand, is moving left right on the time axis. At the start of this trip, we're at a time of 0. And at the end of this section, we have traveled a time of two seconds. So the run is two seconds. So the gradient's equal to rise over run, which is 40 meters per second divided by two seconds. 40 divided by two gives us a value of 20, and a meters per second divided by second gives us a, a unit of measurement of meters per second per second, which is commonly called meters per second squared. And of course, acceleration is a vector, so we need to give it a direction. This graph has no labeling on the vertical axes in terms of north, south, east, or west, so we'll simply use the description forwards. Question number two, what was the acceleration of the object over the final two seconds? So we represent the graphing of the final two sections with a red line. Again, acceleration is equal to gradient, which we just saw was equal to rise over run. The rise starts at a velocity of 40 and ends at a velocity of zero. So this is actually a negative gradient, so it's not really so much a rise, but a fall. We can record that as a rise of negative 40 meters per second because it's decreased or dropped by 40 meters per second. The run, once again, is two seconds. We have got a time from five across to seven, the difference of which is two. So negative 40 divided by two gives us the number of negative 20. And once again, the units of measurement are meters per second per second, which is written as a meters per second squared. Now we can describe that as negative 20 meters per second squared forward, or alternatively we can describe the acceleration as 20 meters per second squared backwards. Question number three, what was the distance traveled by the object over the entire journey? So the distance is equal to the area under the graph. Or a better way of saying this, the distance is equal to the area below the line of the graph to the x-axis. So I've colored that in blue so it's easy to see. Now that particular shape is called a trapezium. So the distance is equal to the area of the trapezium shown in blue. And the general formula for trapezium is a half in brackets of a plus b, close brackets times h, where a is one of the parallel side lengths. So here we see that this line, the top part of our trapezium, starts at a time of two and finishes at a time of five. The difference between two to five is three. And b is the other parallel line of the trapezium. It starts at a time of 0 and ends at a time of 7, so, so it has a value of 7. H is the height of our trapezium. So it starts on the vertical axis at 0 and goes all the way up to 40. There's a height of 40. Let's substitute those values into our equation. So the A was 3, the B was 7, and the H was 40. 10 times 40 would be 400, and half of that would be 200 metres. So this graph indicates the object travelled a total of 200 metres. What was the object's displacement at the journey's end? So as the graph is always above the x-axis, the displacement is equal to the distance traveled. This object never went backwards. Okay, it's always traveling forwards. So the magnitude or size of the displacement is equal to the distance. So it's also 200 meters, but displacement being a vector needs a direction associated with it. So the total answer is it's 200 meters forwards. Question number five, was the object ever stationary? And if so, when? No, the object was never stationary. Let's look at this. From zero to two seconds, this object is increasing its velocity. It's got constant acceleration. From two to five seconds, it has a constant velocity of 40 meters per second. From five to seven seconds, its velocity is continually decreasing, or we could call it a negative acceleration. So no, the object was never stationary. Question six, during what time interval or intervals, if any, was the object traveling forwards? The object was traveling forwards for the entire duration of the journey. The line is always above the x-axis. This is always moving forward. And finally, question seven, during what time interval or intervals, if any, was the object traveling backwards? The object was never traveling backwards for the duration of the journey. The line was never below the x-axis. 
You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.